Hey everybody. Today we're doing some slightly more elaborate box and violin plots in R using ggplot. If all you're looking for is a super easy rough and ready box plot, I have a video on that. I'll throw a link up top. I'm going to be working to start with the, um, the msleep data set. So let's take a quick look at that with glimpse msleep. There we are. So we have 11 variables, we have 83 observations. I'm going to be interested in the categorical variable vor. We have things like carnivore, omnivore, and herbivore. And the quantitative variable sleep total. And so the first thing I'm going to want to do is to get a, a box plot comparing those two variables. So as advertised, it's ggplot, the name of the data set, msleep. On the x-axis, let's put vor. On the y-axis, sleep total. And let's go ahead and fill this according to the VOR as well. Let's make these box plots all have different colors according to that categorical variable. Of course, it's geom box plot. Let's see how this looks. All right, so there's a super rough and ready um, box plot. There's a lot that we might want to do here. In particular, notice that the legend is redundant. Let's go ahead and take that out with show legend equals false. Okay, so now we don't need that anymore. Now, one of the major problems with box plots is that they don't show relative sample sizes. In other words, as I look at these different boxes, I could be I could get the illusion that the sam the number of data points in each box are exactly the same, when in fact that's radically not the case. So, an important principle of data visualization is when practical, you should actually visualize your individual data points one way or another. So let's do that by putting actual points on here. I could do it with geom point. Instead, I'm going to use geom jitter so that they get bumped a little bit to the side, left and right, so they don't necessarily overlap as much. And let's just see what this looks like. All right. So now each one of my individual data points in this set is plotted. There are two things I want to point out about this. First of all, the jitter width defaults to something like 0.4. I think it's 0.4 the same width as these plots. And we can change that with width equals. So for instance, let's do 0.2. And now they're a little bit more clustered horizontally. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out though, right now. The, um, the major problem, however, is that outliers here have potentially been double plotted. Geom Jitter is putting in a point for every row in our data set that has actual data. And geom box plot is actually putting in points for our outliers as well. So those outliers are potentially double plotted. Let me illustrate that by taking out the geom jitter for just a second. And you can see those outliers. When I put them back in, you can very clearly see them being double plotted. Okay, so we're going to want to add an argument to geom box plot to get rid of those. It is going to be outlier dot shape equals NA. And we no longer have the problem of that double plotting. Okay, the next example I want to do involves the Palmer Penguins data set. That's in the model data package. And to get access to that data set, we need to type data, parentheses penguins. And then let's glimpse that as well. All right, so this time we have 344 observations, seven, dif seven different variables. In this case, I'm gonna be interested in the species categorical variable. You can see that's a factor variable. I believe there's three levels to that one. And I'm going to be interested in, um, I think, bill length on this one. Yeah, bill length. So let's start with a just basic ggplot on this. So penguins. And same as before, I want x to be my categorical variable, y to be my quantitative one. And uh, this time, well, no, let's still fill it by the categorical variable. Start with a box plot. And let's see here, let's go ahead and take out the legend right away. Same issue as before, right? There we go. 
Okay, so um, proceeding just as before, we could put in our points with Geom Jitter. But you can see the potential problem here. There's so many points that are potentially obscuring the box plots themselves. There's all sorts of things that we could do to deal with that. We could add some transparency, for instance. Um, but I want to illustrate another point, and that is um, to start with the violin plot. So the idea of a violin plot is very similar to a box plot. It's going to still illustrate the shape of the data set, give us uh, the min and the max, as well as uh, some semblance of, of what the distribution looks like within each of these categories. Um, but this time we should be able to see not just the five number summary and outliers, but a bit more detail in the, in the set itself. So there we go. Um, if we like, we can actually add in a box plot on top of that with Geome box plot. And for the moment, I'll just hit enter. It's not going to be perfect right away. So the reason I'm not in love with it is because here with the chin straps, the box plot is hanging out over the edges. I guess that's true for the Gen 2s as well a little bit. So let's fix that. The um, default width for the for these box plots, I believe is 0.75. Let's make that a little smaller, 0.5. There we go. So um, we could tinker with that to make them fit in a bit more exactly. The idea here is now we can see not only the shape of the distribution with, within each of these species, but also the five number summary. 